Hello everybody, today we're going to be building visualizations in Pandas. In this video, we'll look at how we can build visualizations like line plots, scatter plots, bar charts, histograms, and more. I'll also show you some of the ways that you can customize these visualizations to make them just a little bit better. With that being said, let's go right over here and start importing our libraries. And we'll start with importing Pandas, SPD. And this one is really all you need to actually create the visualizations in Pandas, but we may get a little bit crazy. Uh, and so we're gonna do a few different ones as well, like import numpy as np, and then we're gonna do import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Now I may or may not use this. I just, you know, when I get into visualizations, I may wanna change some different things. So we're gonna at least have them here in case we do want to use them. Let's go ahead and run this. So now let's get our data set that we're going to be using. So let's say data frames equal to PD dot read underscore CSV. And let's get this in right here. Now we're going to be doing these ice cream ratings. Let's take a look at this really quickly. Now these values are completely randomly generated. They are not real in any way. Um, but that's what we're going to be using. Cause I just wanted something kind of generic, something that wouldn't be too crazy confusing, just something that we could use. And you guys can understand that they're just numerical values, but let's also set that index really quick. So we'll say data frame dot set underscore index, and then we'll say date, and then we'll say that's equal to the data frame. And we have this date column right here as our index. So we have uh, January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and then we have our ratings right here. And again, these are all just integers and they're pretty easy or are really easy to demonstrate how you can visualize these. So that's why we're using it today. So the way that we visualize something in pandas is we use something called plot. So let's just take our data frame. We'll do a data frame dot plot and we'll do our parentheses. Now let's go in here really quickly. Let's hit shift tab and this is going to come up and this is pretty important because this kind of is going to tell us what we can do within this plot. And unfortunately, there isn't like a quick overview. We just have this doc string, but we have our parameters right here. These are what we can pass in to kind of customize our visualization. So the data is going to be our data frame. Then we have our X and Y labels. We can specify the kind, and this one's important because we can specify what kind of visualization do we want. We can do a line plot, horizontal, a vertical bar plot, histogram, box plot, and then a few others, including area, pi, density, all these other things. We can also specify if we want it to be a subplot. And a lot of these things that I'm specifying, you know, I'm going to show you how to do. You can use uh, different indexes. You can add titles, add grids, legends, styles, all these different things. I mean, you can go through here because there are a lot. But you can specify and, and, you know, customize all of these things. We won't be going into all of them, but I will show you some of the ones that I probably use the most and that I think are the most useful to know right away. So let's get out of here and we're just going to do df.plot. And when we run this, we'll get this right here. And that was super, super easy. We created a line plot by literally doing just about nothing. Um, but by default, it's going to give us a line plot. So if we come up here, we say kind, and let me get that out of the way, is equal to line and we run this. So by default, without us actually having to input anything, it's giving us that line plot as a default. So uh, we can specify that it's a line plot. As you can see, we already have all of our data right here. We didn't have to specify anything. It kind of automatically took it in. It is visualizing all three of these columns and it has this little um, legend right here and we can specify where we want that. Uh, there is uh, an argument to be able to do that. It also gave us these tick marks of two, four, six, eight, ten. Again, it read in and said it's only going from 0, 0.0 to 1.0. That is kind of the peak. And so it kind of automatically gave us these ticks for us. Again, that's another thing that you can specify. We make it go up to two, five, ten, a thousand, whatever you want it to be. And then we're doing this based off of this date value right here. Really quickly, I wanted to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this entire Panda series, and that is Udemy. Udemy has some of the best courses at the best prices, and it is no exception when it comes to Pandas courses. If you want to master Pandas, this is the course that I would recommend. It's going to teach you just about everything you need to know about Pandas. So huge shout out to Udemy for sponsoring this Panda series, and let's get back to the video. If we wanted to break these out by the actual column, we could go in here and say subplot is equal to true and it's actually subplots, whoops. And now we can run that. 
And then we can see each of those columns being broken out by themselves instead of them all being in one visualization. It's now uh, three separate visualizations. Now let's go right over here. We're gonna get rid of the subplots. I wanna show you just some of the different arguments that you can use to make this look nice uh, because I don't wanna do this on every single visualization. I just wanna show you what you can do. So we have this one right here. We can add a title. Notice there's no title or anything really telling us what that is. So we can say comma title and we'll say ice cream ratings. If we run this, we now have this nice title right here. Now we can also customize the labels or the titles for the X and Y axis. It automatically took this date, which is right here. This is our date index. It automatically took that for us, but we can customize that if we'd like to. All we have to do is comma, and then we'll say X label is equal to, and so our X is this date one right here, and we can say daily rating. And then we can do the Y label. We'll say Y label is equal to, and for this one, we can say scores. I hope you cannot hear my dog in the background because they are being insane. Uh, but let's go ahead and run this. And now we have these daily ratings on the X axis and on the Y axis, we have scores. Now let's go right down here and start taking a look at our next kind of visualization, which is gonna be a bar plot. So we'll do df.plot, we'll do kind is equal to, and for this one, we're gonna say bar. Now this is what your typical bar plot will look like and a lot of the arguments that we just did on the line plot, you can also apply to this bar plot. Something that's unique to the bar plot is that you can also make it a stacked bar plot. All we have to do is go in here, we'll say comma, and we'll say stacked is equal to true. So now it's gonna make it a stacked bar chart instead of just you know your regular bar chart. Let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see, this is now stacked on top of one another with each of these columns all representing the values that they have. Now we don't always have to do every single column. We can also specify the column that we want. So let's take the flavor rating, for example. We could do flavor, oops, flavor rating. Good night, flavor rating. And then it's only gonna take in that flavor rating column. And if you notice, we don't have a legend. That's only when you have multiple values, which we are only looking at this one column. So all the values are right here. Now in this bar chart, it automatically defaults to a vertical bar chart, but you can change it to a horizontal bar chart. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that. Bring back all of them. We'll do df.plot dot, and then we'll say bar h. And I don't know if I can keep in that kind equals bar. Let me run this. Yeah, I need to get rid of that because the bar.h is its own, um, this is its own function. So now I'm gonna run this. It should just have a stacked bar chart, except now it should be horizontal. So now you can see this worked properly. It's basically the exact same thing as a vertical bar chart, just now horizontal, which may look better, especially depending on if you have values like this or you know, something else that just looks better being horizontal. Now the next one that we're gonna take a look at is the scatter plot. So we're gonna say df.plot.scatter. And if we run this, we're gonna get an error. What we need in order to run this properly is we need to specify the x and the y axis in order for this scatter plot to work. So let's go here and we'll say x is equal to, and we can take any of our columns that we have up here. So we'll say X is equal to texture rating, and then oops, Y is equal to, and we'll do overall rating. Now when we run this, it should work properly. Let's go ahead and take a look. Now if we go in here and we do shift tab, we can also see some other things that we can specify. So let's go right down here. So we have our X and we have our Y, and those are the ones that we just did. We can also pass through an S, which is gonna tell us or, or change the size of the actual dots right here in our scatter plot. Then we can also do a C, which is the color of each point. Let's start with the S. Let's say S is equal to, and let's just do 100. Let's see what that looks like. So we have a much larger number. Let's do 500 and see what that looks like. So we can make these much larger on our visualization, depending on what you're looking for. We can also look at the color. Let's put comma C. So for color, we can say color is equal to, and let's do uh, yellow. Let's see if this works. So now we've changed it to yellow. That looks uh, absolutely terrible, but it does work. Now let's move on to the histogram. 
This term is always a good one. It's very similar to something like a bar chart. But what's great about a histogram is you can specify the bins. Um, so let's go ahead and say df.plot.hist. Then we'll do an open parentheses. And let's go ahead and hit shift tab in here. Take a look at this one as well. So some of our parameters are the actual columns or the data frames that we want to pull in. We can choose the bins and they have a default of 10 in here. And so let's take a look at how this works. So we'll just run this as it is. So this is by default what this histogram is going to look like. Let's go ahead and specify our bins. We'll just say it was 10 by default. Let's just do 20. See what that looks like. So there are smaller columns right off the bat. And remember, histograms are really good for showing distribution of variables. You know, that's really what a histogram is for. But of course, since these are completely random numbers, this histogram isn't going to make any sense at all. But you can at least kind of see visually how it works. And if I didn't mention it before, which I should have, the bins represent how many kind of tick marks are down here. So if we just do one, it's only going to be one very large, uh, <laughs> you know, histogram. We could even go further down from 10 and do five. So now there's only one, two, three, four, five. So the distribution gets smaller and things get more compact. As you spread it out, again, like we did 100, it's going to spread it out a lot. Um, and this is what it shows. It, you know, it's showing the distribution of those bins across however many you want. And so the 10 by default, you know, it usually is pretty good for a lot of different things. Now let's go down here and look at the box plot. And the box plot is a pretty interesting one. Let's go ahead and visualize it really quickly, and then I'll kind of explain how this one works. So let's do df.boxplot. Let's run this. And really what we're looking at is some different markers within our data. This line right here is the minimum value within that column. We also have the bottom of the box, which is the 25th percentile of all the values within just this column. This is 50%, then we have 75%, and then up here, we have our maximum value. So I can take a glance at this and see that we have a low minimum, a high maximum, and it definitely skews towards the lower range. Whereas if I look over here, we have a lower minimum and a higher maximum. And you can see that this me medium point is at 0.6 versus 0.4 over here. So this skews a lot higher. Now let's go down here and take a look at an area plot. We'll do df.plot.area. And let's just run this. This is what we're going to get by default. Now, Something I wanted to show you earlier, I just haven't gotten around to. I want to show you something called figure size or fig size. Um, so for this, it's you know, it's just looks small, looks a little bit cramped. Let's say we want to increase the size of this. And we'll say fig size, oops, fig size is equal to, and let's just do a parentheses and say 10 comma five. That should be pretty large. And this is going to make it a lot larger. Just something I wanted to throw in there. I look at these area charts as pretty similar to like a line chart. If we went and compared those, it would be pretty similar. Um, but they're different visually, and you know, you absolutely can use these for different types of visualizations. But I don't use this one a lot, if I'm being honest. That's why it's kind of towards the end of the video. But you definitely can do it. Well, let's go on to our very last one of the video. That's going to be the beautiful pie chart. So let's say df.plot.pi. We'll do an open parentheses, and let's run it. We're gonna get this error. That's because we need to specify what column we're working with here. So let's just say the Y, and that's what we need. Let me open this up for us. Right here we have our Y, and this is our, our label or our column that we're gonna plot. That's really all we need. So we can just say Y is equal to flavor rating. Oops, flavor rating. And let's run this. And now we get this visualization right here. Let's make this one a little bit bigger. Big size is equal to 10 comma six. Now it's a little bit bigger. It definitely depends. So this legend is going to auto populate. You know, you can make this as big as you want. And obviously it's going to look a little bit better if you do it larger. And these colors auto populate. Now you can customize these colors, although I found these ones to be just when you have a lot of them, it's harder to customize them as easily. But, you know, definitely look into it. These are things that uh, everything in here is almost something that you can customize in some way. Although it does get a little bit tricky, you definitely have to do some research and some Googling around just to kind of figure out how to do those things. Now, one last thing that I wanted to show and something, you know, I could have probably done at the beginning. 
um, is you can actually change what visual this is. And we can do that pretty easily. Within matplotlib, there are different styles. Um, and so let's go right here. Let's add a new row, a new cell. And we'll say print, and we'll do plt. So that's that matplotlib right here. We'll do plt.style.available. And what this is gonna do, whoops. What this is gonna do is show us all these different types of uh, stylings that you can do to kind of change up this visualization. And then once we find the one that we like, we'll just do plt.style.use. And then in the parentheses, we'll just specify which one we want. Now, there's all these Seaborn ones, and Seaborn is a really great, um, really great library. Let's try Seaborn Deep. I haven't tried this one at all. Let's go ahead and try this. And just changes some of the colors, some of the visuals. We can try something like 538. Let's try this. That looks quite a bit different. And let's try something like um, classic. I don't know what this one looks like. Let's just try it. So you can try out all these different styles, find one that you like, find one that you think looks really nice, and you can run with it through all your visualizations. So this has been our video on visualizing data in pandas. I think it's a really good introduction on how you can visualize data within Python. And in future videos, we'll look at matplotlib and Seaborn, which are some really great libraries for visualizing data, which I use a lot. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to check out all my other videos on Python and pandas, and I will see you in the next video.